Last month I visited India and I interacted with many students and they had this one common question. They want to come to US or Canada for masters in computer science or data science and they were confused. Should they go to Canada or US? I have been living in US for last 14 years, have interacted with many students and based on my experiences, I'm going to give you some suggestion on which country you should pick. There are trade-offs, pros and cons between both the countries. In Canada, the fees is the fees for your studies is much less than what you'll pay in US. On many occasions, it is half than what you'll pay in, in US. The other benefit of Canada is PR. Their permanent residence system, their immigration system is way better than what you have in US. I got my green card, which is a permanent resident card in US after 14 years of wait. Yes. 14 years. So in US, you will probably wait for more than a decade to get your green card. So these are the two benefits of going to Canada. PR, the cost is less. But then US has its own benefit too. If you come to US, the job opportunities are much higher than what you get in Canada. I don't have the exact data, but I'm making a guess that if in Canada, if you have one job opportunity in US, there will be at least five or maybe 10. US is like hot job market. Most of the major companies, if you think about it, big tech companies, they are in US. In terms of pay also, US is much better. You can earn way more money in US than in Canada. So you need to think about few aspects here. Do you want to get your permanent resident card sooner and kind of settle in? In that case, go to Canada. By the way, there is a third benefit that US has, which is Canada, no matter where you go, it's cold in US. If you go to the southern part, right, like Texas, Florida, California, there are many states where the weather is really nice. Now, you need to think about few other aspects also. In US, since the PR system totally sucks, you will wait for your green card for a long, long time. So if you want to start your own business, for example, or do an entrepreneurship in US, it's difficult. There are ways that people kind of you know, people finish their master, they start working on H1, then they start building some startup on side. They maybe get a partner who has a green card or a citizen. People do that. But the, the, the summary is it's not straightforward. You'll have a lot of headache dealing with this whole H1B system. Right now, just now the lottery happened. So lottery is basically after you finish masters, let's say in data science or computer science, you get three years on OPT. And during these three years, you don't need visa. So you can, after your master's, as long as you have a job, you can stay in the country and you can work. But during those three years, you will be applying for H1 every year with the hope that your H1 gets picked up. Every year, many people apply for H1. They have total 85,000 limit. Every year they approve 85,000 H1s. And the number of applications that they get is more than 300,000. So for every three people, only one person uh, gets picked up in H1. Two people gets rejected. So then what people do is, okay, I have three year OPD. I apply first year, I got rejected. No worries, I can still work on my OPD. I apply second year for H1, let's say I get rejected. Third year, the hope is may you get three chance and maybe your H1 will get picked up in, in one of these three years. And if let's say in the third year also you get a rejection, then you have to either go back to the country, which is which might not be that bad because you earn enough money in three years. Like usually your master's cost and everything in first year of your job, you will be able to cover everything. Okay. I know some folks who get scholarships and things like that. And then by the time they are out of their master, they cover all the cost. I interviewed one person, he did his master in data science from Oklahoma State University. I will link uh, that video below. When he was, he was done with his master, not only he paid for all his fees and foods and rent, everything, all the cost he paid, plus he had some saving. Okay, so that can also happen. But let's say that's not the case. Let's say you have some debt. Then in the first year of you doing your job, you will be able to cover all the money. 
So don't worry, all the tuition fees, everything that you got, you'll be able to cover. Of course, you need to get a job, which most of the people who come from outside countries, they're hardworking and they manage to get a job. Okay, so there is a high chance you'll get a job. And then you keep on applying for H1s, let's say in the third year also you get a, reject and a rejection. Worst case, you have to go back to the country, but that's fine. Like three year, you earn money, you got some nice experience. And when you go back to India or whatever your country is, you will get an opportunity because you have this three years solid experience working with US companies, US clients, and that experience will be very, very valuable. Your English communication would have improved. You know the culture, everything, right? So there are n number of benefits. Let's say you don't want to go to uh, the country back. What many people do is they pick another master's. So let's say you spend two years doing computer science, master's in computer science. You get a job. You spend on three years working for some company. Every year you kept on applying for H1B. You got rejection, rejection, rejection. And then after third year, you want to stay in the country. You will do masters, maybe in data science. So you start doing your masters and then after finishing that master, you again get three year OPT and you again get three year chances. But you can see how complicated the system is. People who want to just work on H1B, right? It's, I know there is a lot of headache and things like that, but still it's not that bad. Like I lived in US for like 14 years on H1B and I was working for a good company, Bloomberg. Whenever I went for a visa, I didn't have any issues. Whenever I travel, I never had any problem because you know, you are, your H1B is sponsored by a strong employer and I was able to earn good money. I learned a lot of things. Eventually I got my green card. So it's, it's not, you know, on H1B versus green card, the life is this different. It's not much different. I, I bought my home, this home when I was on H1B. So pretty much the, the only difference is, yeah, you go back to your country, you have to go for visa. You, you have this little tension in your head that, okay, my, what will happen to my H1? Will I get my green card? There is some uncertainty, but other than that, you have uh, the freedom that any other person, even a US citizen has in this country. Okay, you, you of course can't vote, but still it's, it's not bad. So consider all these aspects, the answer that whether you should go to Canada or US depends on your individual situation. So look at your individual situation, make a decision, as I said, both the countries have their own pros and cons. I hope you like this video. If you have any other question, comment box below, post your question there. <laughs> Bye.